Uh, let's talk about the WWE financials. Uh, I had a couple of questions about television. Mm-hmm. Um, you wrote that cable TV is down 11.5% in viewers over the past year. Yes. And that network television was 15.9%. So network is down more than cable over the year. Which is interesting because network has not lost viewers. It's actually gained viewers and cable has lost viewers. I mean, in the sense of number of homes that have access to it with people cutting the cord. While network, um, the number of viewers is actually up very slightly. But cable, it's down, um, you know, 5% year over year. As far as homes, you know, maybe a little more than 5%, maybe closer to 6%. Well, no, about 5%, about 5%. Do you sense that to be a trend? Is that going to be the norm? I don't know. You know because the, the sense that I got was that, uh, and this is not. Well, just I, think some, I think some of this is that sports are doing so well, and most sports are not on network. Most sports are on ESPN, and to a lesser extent, you know, TNT and TBS um, and some and FS1 and some of the other sports stations. Uh, so I think that maybe that's part of it. I think scripted programming is going down as people more and more look to um, streaming for the scripted programming and you don't have to watch it at a certain time. You watch it on your own time, but sports is something that you generally are going to watch at a certain time, you know, when the game is on. So I think that, that may have something to do with it. But it seems like, and this is not just Nick Khan, but a lot of these other uh, VPs and such, their mentality is, well, as long as we have broadcast, we're going to be fine. But those numbers, and broadcast is still in, in, in more homes, but those right. numbers, it looks if what you said is broadcast looks to be going down a little bit more quickly. But it's still much bigger than cable. I right. mean, as far as like, you know, a, a show... I mean, look at we just saw it last week with with SmackDown. I mean, and the difference is is actually staggering. SmackDown did what forty four just over forty percent of what it usually does. I mean, it's not like it did, um, you know, seventy percent. You know what I mean? It did like what it did over, just a little over eight hundred, right? And um, it's usually doing over two million. That's a big difference. That's big. That's a that's actually a really big difference. And I mean, some of that's the World Series too, but. <clears throat> you know, I mean, ten percent of that's probably the World Series, but but not the the not the other you know uh, sixty you know the other fifty percent is not the World Series, right? Uh, and then uh, you know, there's another comment that uh, I believe it was Nick Khan who made it. He said that uh, the NFL's demos are younger on Amazon, and I've heard that from other places. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. M- M- NFL on Amazon is actually skewing younger than um, almost anything i mean the nba is the youngest skewing um soccer is very young as well um aw used to be in the same realm as both of those and aw has skewed older to where it's it, you know before it'd be like the lebron games would, would be younger than aw now it's most nba games and before it would be one or two soccer games a week you know with like the real famous teams now it's a lot of soccer but aw is still younger than pretty much everything else but NFL on Amazon is is also, um, you know, it's it's a lot younger skewing. And I think that um, Amazon is going to be younger skewing than network television across the board. Just I think that's just a, a natural aspect of it. But it it's still um, it's not like the Amazon does more viewers 18 to 49 than Monday Night Football on ESPN or anything like that. You know, what else is young skewing, though, is the uh, the Manning cast. Mm hmm. You know, so that's a football thing that's that's and it's equally as young skewing as the the Amazon Prime Thursday game. Is is what why why is that? Are we are we saying because more younger people are younger people more are more likely to, to to watch streaming and older people are more are way 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 more likely to watch network television? I think so, there's that's that's part of it. And then cable is kind of the in the in between the two. Does that mean that WWE's content? on peacock is younger than on cable we have no evidence of that but i would bet a lot of money that that's the case because he didn't say that specifically uh or that i haven't heard them mention that they've never said they've never said that but um i would bet that that's the case just because of uh 
you know, natural logic, so to speak. Um, so, and I would, I would suspect that the AEW pay-per-view audience skews much lower than dynamite and rampage for the same reasons, because it's streaming for right. the most part, you know, rather, I mean, some of the pay-per-view is uh television, but, um, two thirds of the, of the pay-per-view pie is, is streaming now, which by the way, we should, we should talk about Anderson Silva and Jake Paul later too. No, I mean, let's talk about it now. I think it fits the conversation. I know that you had said that your numbers for the for the cable pay per view were really low, thirty thousand, thirty one thousand. Yeah, really, really low. Um, it it was down, um, uh, you know, significantly from the second Woodley fight, mm -hmm. and this fight should have been bigger. So, you know, picked up a good friend by the way this week. <laughs> <laughs> it's people who weren't people people who. Uh, didn't want, uh, uh, you know, people who were uh, just wanted to point out that uh, Anderson and uh, Jake Paul didn't do nearly as well. Jake Paul said it did terrible, but it did more terrible than Jake Paul said. I guess that's the best way to put it. So he was saying like two to three hundred thousand. Yes, he was saying two to three hundred thousand, which he which he was lamenting and saying was terrible and thought Halloween week was bad and football season's bad and kind of saying like, you know, from now on, I want to do my big fights in the summer when there's not all this competition. And I mean, yeah, you know, there's less competition, but if you have a big fight, it's not going to make a big difference on pay-per-view. Like if you, if you have a big attraction that people are going to pay money for, you're going to do similar numbers, no matter what, when it comes to television viewing, it's going to vary like crazy. You know, it's like, it's like, uh, you know, live attendance, you know, when people throw up, you know, excuses, you know, it's it's excuses. When it comes to television, people cry excuses. Usually they don't know what they're talking about because live television is is so much dependent upon a casual audience mm -hmm. that, you know, if there's something else bigger, they're going to watch that. You know, it's just like, you know, the raw numbers, um, you know, against Halloween on Monday, the the uh, AW number on Wednesday against the World Series. Of course, they were way lower. You know, and then, you know, anyone who says that that's an excuse, they know nothing about life, let alone television. Yeah. Uh, so I saw Jake Paul is going to be uh, on the show tomorrow. I saw yeah, him at the press the conference. Show. Yep. And it made me it made me wonder, like, WWE utilizing Logan Paul. I think it's been really cool so far. He's a, another character. He brings a different set of eyeballs. But does, he doesn't. I don't know that he does. That's the funny thing. Because well, it, maybe not to to TV, even I, to streaming. I, I, I've looked at the, the 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 YouTube numbers. This is the thing: well, the YouTube numbers for Logan Paul segments are nothing special at all. They shocked me how low they were. So I don't know. Like, I mean, Logan Paul is cool for this show because he's big in Saudi Arabia and he's a celebrity, and that's what they like. They like this stuff there. So, and they're booking shows to please that audience yeah you know the, the 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 higher ups the king and all that you know like we're bringing real celebrities in like they brought in kane you know who really didn't mean much to wrestling fans uh they brought in um tyson fury who i don't really think outside of england meant anything to wrestling fans honestly even though he was a good talker and and everything um but that's what they do for the saudi arabia shows um but i mean look i i thought you know like that logan paul will bring in y younger tv viewers and he's going to bring in, you know, his streaming numbers will be through the roof. And it did not happen at all. I mean, it's not just that they boo him. I mean, it's there's a reason they use him. And, and I'm not saying that they're wrong for using him. They're not because of what. But but it's not what people perceived it would be. And certainly not what I perceived it would be. It, it didn't. The, 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 he, has a, he has an audience. I think that that audience may have gone with him and probably did the first time he did it. But it's like all of these type of things. It's like when Rodman was in WCW, um, his first appearance did well. And then his first match did well, you know, after that, the, that was it. People had seen that had seen the gimmick, the, the gimmick stuff does not, it like, it can work once it's like nostalgia gimmicks yeah. and nostalgia. It can work once, but in the long run, um, it, if you keep bringing it back, it's not going to mean anything. You know, it's not like converting those people into fans. It's convert. It's bringing those fans in, but they're not going to keep doing it. Just like, and, and the perfect example is Jake Paul and Anderson Silva. Um, Jake Paul did do great pay-per-view numbers at one point and now against his toughest opponent and in, in what theoretically should have been his biggest fight, he didn't bring anyone in because they, they've already seen it 
And the boxing fans were not the people who were ordering the Jake Paul pay-per-views. Right, right. Yeah, I mean, that the whole the whole thing is hopefully a great learning experience on... It, everything's know. a learning experience. You know, one, one thing at the, at, the, um, car, at the investor's call on uh, Wednesday that I was... I found it to be really refreshing. And it was uh, from Paul Levesque. And he was talking about how, you know, we're, we're thinking these ideas out of the box and we're going to do them. And he just goes, some of them are going to fail. And that's okay. Because every time we fail, we learn something. If we have nothing but success, we learn nothing. And I thought that was a very refreshing thing because I have been through decades with executives who are bookers who learn nothing from their failures and make excuses for their failures and never evolve and keep failing or keep not updating their opinions because they are unable to do so. And, and again, it's easy to say, I could say the same thing. That doesn't mean I'm going to learn, you know, even though I, I would try, but I, I found that to be, when he said that, it was like, wow, you know, someone who, you know, and he's not the only one, Tony Khan, you know, is, does the same thing, but to say it publicly, it's like, look, we're going to have our failures and we're going to learn from them. And this is one of them, you know, this, this Logan Paul thing, not that it's a failure because of Saudi Arabia, but as a television thing, um, you know, I can't call it a success. You know, the ratings, Bray Wyatt's a success mm -hmm. and they're going to do a lot more of the Bray Wyatt stuff. However, just as I said, they keep doing this, you know, game thing. And it worked like crazy on a certain shows, you know, the September 23rd SmackDown, the October 10th Raw uh, extreme rules those shows did great because of bray wyatt but if they keep going to that same type of marketing they're not going to have the same results right they have to do something different all the time they you know so it's it's like it's a learning experience to do it again yes you do it again but you also have to know you will not have the same success doing it again and there's other ideas that you have to do but you don't throw this one out completely because it did work right yeah, we'll talk about Crown Jewel here in a second. I just want to ask a couple more questions about uh, about the, uh, the the financials. So one of the uh, the things was again talking about Amazon and and the streaming that they're doing to deal with the NFL. But Nick Khan specifically said he didn't think you could sort of simultaneously have broadcast and cable and streaming and sell them differently and sell yeah and sell them in in, in different yeah, packages they, basically people want the exclusive right yeah, Bec yeah. and they, and they don't they, they would rather have their product raw and smackdown on broadcast and cable at this point because of where the eyeballs are yes but that's changing i think that the nfl success would tell them don't be scared of streaming i would not want both shows streaming i would definitely want one of them but if you got a great offer like a couple of years ago, if you had the great offer, I would say, mm, you know, your business is depending on other things. You know, you got your live event business, you got your merchandise business and all that. So the exposure is the king and 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 go on Fox, right? Um, you know, Fox wasn't the success that we thought it would be. It was not a failure, but it was not the success. It did not create a boom period. The Fox numbers are not, you know, 1.0 in 18 to 49 or even close, which was the numbers that they were talking about you know, um, in 2019 when this deal started. Um, so, you know, it's like they're, um, I don't think that you're, you're locked into it. If all things are even and money is even. Yeah. Of course you go with network TV Yeah, still. Um, but it's evolving and, you know, 10 years from now, the answer might be different, but, but for now you would still go network number one, um, Probably cable number two and streaming number three. If if all three offers are identical, um, five years from now maybe no, maybe that changes. It depends when the uh, Amazon numbers, and we're going to know. I'll tell you when we know when the Amazon numbers for Thursday night football beat Sunday night football. Then we know when it beats Monday night football. Then we know. So we're going to have it like we're going to know when that those numbers cross. We're going to know that. We're going to know when it crosses with younger viewers, which will be quicker than when it crosses in total viewers. And I think that you make the move when it crosses with younger viewers is the key is the number that you're looking for, not the total viewer number when it comes to that. So when the 18 to 49 number for the Thursday night game, which is probably something that we should be monitoring um, going forward, you know, and, and I probably will, is when that 18 to 49 number is comparable to Monday Night Football. And when it is, uh, things have changed. The other thing about streaming, though, is it's not like 
on broadcast television where if you're on Fox or you're on NBC or on CBS, you're essentially on in the same amount of homes. Amazon and Netflix are going to be in a far more, a far larger number of homes than something like Peacock. Peacock oh, absolutely. Is, absolutely. Peacock is like, I don't know, 20% of the U.S. and Canadian homes of Netflix uh, uh, or something um, like no, that? No, well, Peacock's not even in Canada at all. But um, Peacock has uh, 15 and a half million subscribers right now. But there's more than that who have access to it. But they probably have, um, you know, in the 20s as far as because a lot of people get it for free. So it's probably half of Netflix or a third. I'd have to check on the Netflix number. But yes, yeah, it's, it's way, way less. Absolutely. And so, so yeah. So so if Peacock would want if, if it if if the idea was of putting raw on Peacock, no, 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 we're not ready for that. No. I mean, again, maybe in 10 years, but not now. No. Yeah. So that that's the other part of it is the streaming companies. They're all, you know, they're all shooting for the same pie, essentially. Yeah. And, you know, your Netflix's, uh, HBO Netflix Max's is, is, are, yeah, are the ones who are getting a little bit bigger of a share. But you also, you know, what I, what I noticed uh, recently, uh, do you, do you understand how Pluto TV works? Not really. So Pluto TV, and there are other versions of this is basically, <laughs> it is basically television, how we grew up, or I would say cable, how we grew up with all commercials it's all commercials so uh they, they have all these channels like let's say you wanted to watch well, i know about all the channels on pluto yeah the threes company channel essentially right you just watch threes company like all day thrown in the background but those channels i forget which one it was it finally broke into like the top 10 of, of all the streaming so even those networks are kind of creeping on the the piece of the pie and like i don't know anybody who exclusively watches those it's mostly to watch something some wrestling companies have uh content on, on those channels as well but uh but even those are growing which is which is kind of amazing to me because i never imagined like going to a website to watch a tv network without with, with commercials but then again if you have pulled the plug and you are not cable and uh and you don't have cable at all that may be a good alternative so that's actually pretty interesting as well yeah um Okay, so let, let's go back to the to the white rabbit thing you mentioned, and, and that was kind of my thought was, you know, you can't go to this well uh, too often because then you know you're just sort of repeating and it's not going to work a, as well. But I do wonder because they kept bringing it up and deservedly so patted themselves on the back for it. Mm -hmm. um, uh, how many uh, like uh, creatively like how often can you go to that thing? I would imagine WrestleMania if you're gonna. Man. debut a surprise or someone's going to come back you could do something but i can't you can't do the bray wyatt thing because that's a specific character who you know you can do that stuff for but it doesn't work for every type of character yeah i mean i don't know i don't think you can do it three i don't think you can do it you can do it twice a year and maybe three i don't think you can do it four but that's trial and error too we'll have to learn yeah yeah um, so but they'll probably do it too much and they'll probably do it well, they will do it to the point that it stops working, whatever that point is, because that's just natural. And not just with wrestling, which it always does that, but with everything when it comes to television. When it comes to any gimmick that works in television, they beat it to death, you know, and, and do too much of it. And then it doesn't work anymore for until another generation comes around. And I'm not saying that this is something you only do, you know, once every generation, but, you know, you can't. But I think they're smart enough. I, I would think that they are definitely smart enough to know that we can't have a series of these things over and over and over again. Because if we do, yes, they will. People will just stop caring. But we can do it again now. We can set, definitely do it again um, at some point, you know, if it's in a couple months. Hey, if you're a big fan of Wrestling Observer Radio, we got 12,000 episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website, WrestlingObserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week. You can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work, working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 audio shows at your fingertips.